Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. Live for the first time in about 14, 15 months. The last time I was live is 2020 of March, so do the math. So yeah, about 15 months. Uh, <laughs> we're back here in the studio, uh, being here live from our studio here at the Public Library. Uh, so yeah, let's... Uh <laughs> Let's do this thing. Uh, kicking things off, let's talk a little bit about news, as I always do. Uh, let me just get my uh, computer ready for, for to go. But let's talk a little bit what's happening in the world today. Uh, ransomware is my topic for this morning, because there was a major issue when it comes to new threats to cloak and dagger tactics by everyone in the world. In this case, creating a platform in which one can funnel money through a protected and an encrypted third party makes it even harder to track those who hold large corporations hostage with information and backdoor access to sensitive material. Uh, gas pipeline was the uh, latest in hacking and ransomware, but recent attempts by both FBI and Australian officials have made a large hit in these cyber crimes. Uh, JBS meatpacking was attacked by a ransomware back in uh, October. October, November, around that, by an uh, organization called Re-Evil, which is primarily a Russian-speaking gang that worked to get access to information, but the company and FBI have not released any information about that. The FBI has been using apps and using technology in, um, in their own way to host many sites that would track activities which would be known as considered as the dark web. Uh, Trojan Shield, uh, as it was called, it was an article on NPR reported that they said that the FBI has been monitoring their own black market platform as an information gathering source for texts between drug dealers and other illegal activities resu res which resulted in over 800 arrests. A platform uh, known as Anon was a, an app that was made with a phone that was circulated amongst of, of criminal organizations. Uh, Monday, the FBI released documents that included transcripts of smugglers' uh, conversations in which they named their price and handling fees and described their methods. Many of them also sent Snapchats to each other showing packages of cocaine and other drugs. They discussed strategies from adding drugs uh, to uh, diplomatic uh, pouches to filling pineapples and tuna cans with cocaine. Anon was it encrypting their phone calls, uh, but the complete opposite was happening because the encryption was being made by the FBI. Uh, and FBI has been using Anon since 2018. Um, and Big major things are happening as well. Uh, they've also created an anti-bank uh, robbing app too. Uh, and you can look up more information on that through NPR. In Missoula, things are going more and more back to normal. More people are wearing, uh, are, uh, not wearing masks around town as well, but just so you guys know, if you guys are, uh, are doing any kind of public transportation, you know, taking any flights or taking the local bus, the TSA are federally regulated and the federal government has stated that you must be uh, wear a mask, vac vaccinated or not, while you're riding a bus. And this uh, expiration date for this mask mandate will be September 13th. Um, and uh, speaking of the U.S., we, uh, we've been saying a little bit about the census. You know, I did talk a little bit more about it, but uh, they did another NPR article about the unbalanced Senate majority, which will see that minority of states with a minority amount of population, such as Montana, uh, Wyoming, and even Rhode Island, Island will have major sway in the Senate. Um, if these current trends were to continue, by 2040, 70% of Americans will be re represented by 30 senators, making majority rule with a, mini a minority of the vote, much like U.S. Congress seats that have made up uh, to a set population basis. Uh, senators, on the other hand, there's two senators per state, regardless of the population. Uh, and we'll, we'll and the city, uh, I mean, not the city, but the state of Montana will be seeing a new congressional seat for U.S. Congress uh, person by uh, 2022. That election will see a major shift in balance in the United States. For the newest states in uh, red states, such as Montana, Montana hasn't had a Democratic rep since uh, Pat Williams retired in 1997. Uh, look at the 2016 election overall for an example about how uh, the popular vote didn't matter and the Electoral College rewarded uh, President Trump overall. Many folks are leaving such cities as LA, New York, and other high density populations, mainly because uh, COVID has uh, allowed them to work from home, and many of them have decided to uh, seek out more elbow room as they can work from anywhere. Many have had uh, high density cities and, and, and many were tired of the high density cities and their regulations. There are many organizations also looking to go back to the office uh, while um, 
but others are seeing, but other corporations are seeing the benefits of working from home and being able to save money on office space. Let's see. Uh, yes, I did want to talk about this, uh, but this is a fairly old story, and this has to do with the Mazillion. So the old, the second, uh, and pretty much the final uh, headquarters for the Mazillion will be uh, sold uh, to an unknown buyer. Uh, currently, they do have a buyer. Uh, they put it up for sale back in October of 20. Uh, 20, and they, the uh, uh, ticket price started at $8.58 million, and Lee having a controlling interest in uh, Missoula since 1959. Uh, the last couple years, there have been major changes. The Missoula Independent closed, and uh, such uh, online publications as the Missoula Current were able to uh, come into fruition. Um, but... Uh, the Missoulian, um as we know it, will uh, completely change. It seems like more of the online publication, since they stopped uh, uh, making newspapers here within the city of Missoula, and they have outsourced the printing press to Helena. So the Missoulian's been around since 1870, so 150 years um, leading to this, which it does make me sigh. Uh, in sadness because this is just too common for growing monopolies. And uh, just a little thing you know should know is that Lee Enterprises is an Iowa-based uh, Iowa uh, news uh, corporation that owns 75 daily newspapers in 26 states and more than 350 weeklies, classifieds, and uh, speciality uh, publications. So, that, uh, so that's kind of what's happening here in Missoula, so it's uh, interesting, but uh, hopefully the reporters will be able to keep on reporting here in the city of Missoula, but most likely they'll figure out their uh, circumstances, whether they work from home or they will have an office. Um, so let's talk about uh, something that has been on uh, topic, but also right now it has uh, reached the news cycle, and the news cycle has been tearing it a new one. And I want to talk a little bit more about the PRO Act. Uh, so far, uh, from the very beginnings of the PRO Act, which, was, uh, which would protect a worker's right to organize, uh, or, um, and, would, uh, and the government would find businesses institution for union busting tactics because regardless of how many unions there are, the unions still struggle to provide basic wages to the employees. Alabama, the warrior met miners have been met with opposition. I'm sure you guys heard about this. Uh, there was a viral video that went viral just the other day where a man was uh, basically accosted by one of the union busters cars. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have a really dry throat right now, but... Um, they, this kind of thing is very shady, and with thoughts of um, unionizing um, an Amazon warehouse that failed the other month, met with uh, mini watchdog tactics, which would have the PRO Act come down on these companies. Um, I understand that some of these states have been saying that the PRO Act would kill jobs and would make uh, unions a, a, a billion-dollar industry, but when you really think about it for a while, you know that you'd rather have billions for the working class uh, where their taxes uh, definitely go to the state or the billionaire class that find ways of not paying their taxes. I'm not going to treat the PRO Act as a saving grace for jobs. If anything, it would create a unifying force for workers to gain momentum that could lead to fair wages and retirement plans that are becoming more and more unheard of as the next generation of workforce takes the reins from the aging baby boomer generation. The PRO Act's first line is protecting the right to organize Act of 2021. This is not a new issue, but it is a new solution to a long problem that needs addressing, addressing. If not now, then when? And so that concludes all the news you guys need to know. I had a uh, little more time last week, and I made a fun video for you guys to enjoy right now. And then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some movies that are coming out. So stay with me.
Well, like the beginning of any RPG, there has to be some kind of uh, um, betrayal of some sort and left for dead. Uh, and hopefully I'll continue this next week where you got to see the exciting uh, continuation of the 8-bit adventure I just created. I don't know if it's a series. It's a new series. Yes, it is a new series. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie ab- based on absolutely nothing but maybe a poster and a trailer. But let's kick things off with this next movie. So we have a comeback from an extraordinary musical movies from the Hamilton creator. So, hey, everyone's going to be like, um, Hamilton, I heard that was really good, even though most of them haven't even seen it, because uh, nobody really <laughs> has the opportunity to go to New York as much as uh, people in New York do. So kicking things off, we got In the Heights. So let's talk about this, because if we don't mention that we have uh, that we might have a problem for folks seeing a movie about gentrification, bad, old school neighborhoods, goods, are you following? Uh, a home is no longer a home when you live in a culturally rich community of folks in the city as they're trying to protect their pockets of the city from being overtaken by people who look a lot like me. I didn't mean to, but because of the way I look, I'm compelled to change the heights from a musical to a dull neighborhood of shopping and more shopping. This movie is a prime example of watch the trailer, then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the movie, and you get the gist of the whole entire movie. Speaking of gist, moving on to our next one, it's, as I like to call it, Peter Rabbit has a stable uh, stable piece with Mr. McGregor, but it gets tested even further for funny talking animals rendered using the latest, uh... CGI. <coughs> uh, it's Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. So like rather than some new neighbor messing with his turf, it becomes a kind of a babe pig in the city moment where they have to go on a road trip to get to a place at a certain time before it's too late, or they get separated and they have an adventure trying to get home. Uh, it's kind of unclear in the trailer, but I'm pretty sure it's just, you know, like they're on a road trip and weird things happen. Maybe they try sugar for the first time and funny thing. But hey, you know, Peter Rabbit is very popular and it, it is the uh, British version of this. But hopefully less annoying. Up next, we got a movie. Uh, this next film dives into more Hollywood B to C list actors, hence The Misfits. Pierce Brosnan, who? Right, that James Bond actor from the 90s. He's in it with Nick Cannon. Wow, welcome to my childhood where we bring back actors I thought were good growing up, but now that I know better, I will do better by warning you folks not to go see this movie. It's a heist movie. Expect to see an old school Pierce Brosnan being like, hey, I know exactly what I'm doing. And then other people just like, okay. And then at the end, it's just like, I guess I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew know what to do in the event of not knowing what I was doing. But you didn't know that I knew that I wasn't know what I was doing. So I knew that I was going to do the thing and then have a, a one up you on this one. The movie. <laughs> Finally, we have a video game. Jumping right in, this game is supposed to be a PlayStation Sonic at best. Ratchet and Clank rifts apart. We drop into a number of uh, scheme and jump into a new game where you play as a female alien thing. Clank, the robot, has abilities and powers that you can control from point A to point B. I've never really been clear about how enemies work in this game, but in this case, you are in an alternate world where the bad guy that you've been fighting against uh, rules the universe in some way or that world. Hence, the whole world is against you in fighting and fighting to get the PS5 that people swear are good if they could even get them. All right, so that concludes... Your pre-critic for you guys. Up next, we got a brand new dubbing stuff for you guys, and this is from the movie Out of the Fog. And then when I come back, we'll talk about some city council. All right, now this house looks like a good mark. Hello? Knock, knock, knock. What do you want? What are you doing here? Oh, jeez. Do you realize how late it is? Let me guess, you want some overnight concierge service? I'm sorry I'm a little bit late, but um, I'm just... Uh, I'm old, you have to speed this up. I'm just going to stay overnight. I just need one bedroom if you have any to spare. Hmm. If you must. Hmm. Tough guy, huh? Yeah, you mind if I scope out the place? I'm watching you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, nice. Living room, Excuse fireplace. me, I'm talking to you. Do you think you can just barge in here and use oh, the I'm living room? Oh, I'm just trying room? to get my bearings in this place to make sure it's My secure. late husband left me this place, 
and you better uh, treat yes, me with ma respect. How can you be treating me with respect if you keep interrupting me? It's very rude. Would you know the Wi-Fi password for this place? Well, who do you think I am, Hedy Lamar? Hmm. Hmm. Don't think about it too much. You'll hurt your brain. It's not the brain I'm worried about. It's my funny bone. My friend's grandniece had a funny bone problem, and she wasn't quite the same. Huh. I guess you're in your own way. You actually do care about some of your customers. Well, I haven't gotten paid yet. You have to pay me. Yes, yes, and yet the wheels of capitalism keep on turning. And I, as the customer, must decide <laughs> whether or not to stay well, here. Well, you better pay. Do we seriously have to keep interrupting each other every sentence we make? Oh, now you're silent. I, I just didn't want a place to stay. Is it so hard for you to accept me? Accept customers? It's not always about the money. Then what is it about? Did the last guy not pay you? Because I can pull out my wallet right now and I can show you how much money I have in my wallet. And you'll be like, oh wow, that guy has a lot of money in his wallet. All right, big spender, show me your wallet. I'm not even so sure. I want to stay here. When my husband was alive, he'd stay in all the rooms and he loved it. What's your excuse? I'm going to stand up for this. Oh yeah, I'm standing. And I'm going to stand up to you. Oh, it's over? Mmm. Well, definitely my favorite videos are the ones that just kind of end abruptly where I'm just kind of like, I don't really have a good ending for this. So let's just end it. And that's where you got. Up next, we got some fun uh, city council stuff for you guys. There's a lot going on. And we're kicking things off with uh, Jesse Ramos, who during this, uh, the city spending, and they're talking about updating um, the uh, fiscal year 2021 budget for quarter three. And they usually do this kind of stuff uh, while they're talking about city council and budget money come in and just trying to um, update it to best reflect uh, the money that they have. And so this is what Jesse Ramos had to say, and he's been pretty vocal about uh, funding mechanisms for the uh, Parks and Rec Department. So this is Jesse. We haven't had a chance to, to have the public have a few, full view of what that is and why that needs to be done. There's some stuff going on in Karis Park, which I think is good work. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure if we, we necessarily need it right at this moment. Um, and then there's the issue of, of transferring more money to a further subsidy of aquatics, um, which was told, uh, we were told uh, back in 2006 or so, uh, that that would be self-sustaining within five years. And certainly uh, here we are 2021 and that's not the case. So just general philosophical differences. I think there's some good things that are done there, but um, for the most part, I'm, I'm voting no because I think a lot of this should have and could have been done on the regular budget process. So thank you. All right, so the uh, the funding mechanism was uh, passed to the city uh, by via vote. Um, part of the budgeting and these uh, times that we live in, money and grants are coming into the city of Missoula, is trying to figure out is where they're going to be allocated a lot of this funding. Uh, Missoula and the county got some of the COVID relief money, um, but are able to uh, try to figure out what kind of uh, groups and federal grants they're going to be using. And speaking of federal grants, moves me over to my next segment, which they're talking about home and the community development block grants. And this uh, federal money is going towards uh, affordable housing and sustaining uh, affordable housing moving forward. And here is uh, Gwen Jones, who uh, speaks a little bit more on this. We have quite an extensive process every year for deciding how these federal dollars will be spent in our community. Um, my understanding is each year these dollars basically shrink because they are not, um, there is no allocation for inflationary costs. So they are, are all the more valuable as we um, are a lot of these. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that this year, this, the, after a lot of deliberation, the CDBG funds, um, the great majority are going to Homeward for the Trinity Navigation Center. Um, I have been spending a lot of meetings lately uh, regarding um, housing people in Missoula and especially people who do not have housing and how we are going to uh, continue to work on accommodating that, especially as those numbers are forecast to increase. All right, so also money is going to be going towards Habitat for Humanity. They also mentioned that uh, the money through the federal government on uh, these grants will hopefully keep uh, 
affordable housing permanent in East Missoula. We will be talking a little bit more about East Missoula later in the show, but I just wanted to mention that as well. The Trinity Navigation Center has been a project in the works for about a year or two, and one of the big things for this is to help navigate people to uh, housing, uh, shelter, uh, just kind of like a source for everything informational. Well, you know, like if you're a new resident, you come in here and you want to uh, be a part of the Missoula uh, community, but you don't know how to find the right people and you're coming here too fresh, um, Navigation Center is kind of going to be used uh, to curve a lot of that uh, moving forward. Another big thing for Missoula Housing is the first ever meeting of the Affordable Housing Resident Oversight Committee, which met uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. I'll just talk a little bit about this uh, because they mostly talked about uh, how they're going to conduct themselves in these meetings. Each of them talked uh, a little bit of background of who they are and what their economic background is. And I'll talk a little bit more later on the meeting. I have a couple clips I'll show you, but for the most part, it was just a uh, the ability that they want to uh, accomplish something every meeting since they're going to only meet once a month. All right. In terms of where we are with the Trinity, uh, Trinity Navigation Center, here is Heidi West talking a little bit more uh, about that. So I just want to congratulate uh, Homeward and uh, the Housing Authority and Blue Line. I think in the past week we had uh, three ground breakings. Um, so Bellagio broke ground um, and both Trinity sites broke ground broke ground, so that's going to uh, end up being 402 affordable rental units in our community, and it also includes 30 su uh, supportive housing units and a uh, navigation center. So it is, I think uh, most of those should be move-in ready by 2022 and 2023, which is a long ways away, but in reality, just around the corner. And I'm just thrilled um, that we are where we are right now on those projects. And thank you for everyone who made those possible. And of course, you know, uh, Heidi West's and uh, Brian Van Losberg Ward 1 were, uh, uh, were really fortunate because on the north side, especially on the northern side near Scott Street, uh, a bunch of new affordable housing uh, units are being built currently, which will take care of about 60 to 70 percent of affordable housing in the city of Missoula within the next five years. So there's a lot of good news happening in terms of housing and Missoula is jumping right on it just to make sure that the housing credentials are there for people in the future. And uh, there, th of course, I did want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, you know, housing issues, uh, but I didn't want to talk too much about it because currently there are really major housing issues going on right now that cannot be uh, solved overnight. And this is uh, a lot of the planning for the future of affordable housing in Missoula. So Heather Harp uh, talks about the importance of sidewalks. So everyone's distracted with, you know, like, a lot of the uh, pandemic and a lot of the housing stuff, but nobody really thinks about the importance of sidewalks and infrastructure. So Heather Harp it wants to talk about how important it is to kind of jump on and not forget about uh, something as important as sidewalks. The other week I was driving on my commute out to East Missoula and over the course of two days, I saw a woman who is in a wheelchair pushing a grocery cart from, from Albertsons out to wherever she lives on, on that route. Two days later, I see a gentleman where in a wheelchair as well, pushing another grocery cart. And I have to admit, I, was, I felt some pity at first, but in reality, when I stopped to think about it, I realized that actually, if it wasn't for the sidewalk, those people would be very dependent upon others. And those sidewalks created in a form of independence that I think is really important that we value in this community. And I know there's neighborhoods in this community that do not possess those, those sidewalks. So, as we move forward and we go into the budget season, I'm sure that we will be contemplating our sidewalk program and hope that we can continue to make more folks more independent throughout our community. A couple of years back, um, w one thing um, that really caught my eye about certain budgetary uh, deals is that the city of Missoula was uh, awarded a pretty large substantial grant to put in a sidewalk and about $800,000 went to sidewalks. And you know how much uh, how, lo uh, how much sidewalks were created with just $800,000? One mile. And with cost of raw materials and construction going up, I can't imagine that, uh, uh, that the cost for sidewalks are gonna start being a million dollars per mile within uh, the city of Missoula. So that's definitely a very staggering and kind 
kind of uh, sobering uh, thought to think about as we're kind of uh, improving the infrastructure within the city of Missoula, replacement of water pipes since we acquired the uh, the uh, the water pro uh, the the Missoula uh, Mountain Water Company, um, but. It's it's interesting kind of thinking about how the city is looking for alternative ways to help paying for this kind of infrastructure improvement. Hence, we come back to TIF funding, which is very controversial to a good amount of people in the city of Missoula thinking that uh, they're giving tax breaks to developers and uh, quote unquote corporations who are building um, a more and more high rising buildings continuing the gentrification in the city of Missoula, but at the same time, uh, TIF using to mitigate blight, but also using the tax rebates f of TIFs to allow for uh, sidewalk improvements, uh, uh, basic area improvements as well. Um, um, but on the other hand, they had the urban renewal district, which would pay for it, but based on the district around that area, which means the people in that area for 10 to 20 years would be paying the taxes on those sidewalks. This way, the developer who's building the new buildings would uh, have a tax break and then use the money from the tax break that they would have used to uh, build the sidewalks for the city of Missoula. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting kind of deal how the city is trying to figure out ways to save uh, citizens' money, uh, even though in a lot of ways there are a lot of eyebrows being raised when it comes to TIF funding. But let's not talk about that. We're going to talk about some committee meetings. We're talking about uh, ambulances, and they're looking to uh, have a 90 percentile staffed engines um, of paramedics. So they want to hopefully uh, bolster uh, some more uh, education. And uh, so far, with it is within the current budget of this uh, city of Missoula Fire Department. So Brad Davis, Fire Chief for Missoula, talks about this new deal. We will pay their tuition to attend paramedic school, and in, ex in exchange, um, they will basically do their clinical time and put in several hundred hours of their own time uncompensated, um, which is in the contract that they would normally be compensated for. So that's the trade off. Um, that's the MOU that they will not get comp time for their clinical hours, and in exchange, we will pay their tuition for this paramedic program. Um, everything that is listed in this MOU, the tuition cost and the, the additional cost of their textbook and, and their screening, drug screening, et cetera, is all in our current budget and in our next fiscal year budget. Um, so there would be really no fiscal impact other than our current budget. All right, so Brad Davis also mentioned that the overall cost of this would be uh, 15,000 per person, not to exceed four people at a time. So this is going to be about four new paramedics every year with the uh, uh, memorandum of understanding, which r would require them to work the, uh, the what's that called? Uh, the, uh, the necessary hours to uh, complete their paramedics training. And those hours that they would devote to the engines would be not compensated because in their own way, they are paying for the schooling uh, for the employees. All right, so that was that in that public safety and health meeting. Up next, we got land use and planning, and they are talking about the first cash and loo uh, plan for a subdivision in some parks at the McNett Flats. This is a $208,000 total cash and loo parkland amount. Neil Miner speaks about this proposal in the uh, future Mullen area. This is the site in context to the Sutipkin neighborhood master plan. It's the red boundary. Uh, the reason for choosing the cash and loo was the proximity to 44 Ranch and the proposed future uh, neighborhood park to the north that would serve the other half of the, the subdivision. Um, we are actively trying to acquire parkland in this area now. Uh, while the oh, okay. So that was Neil Miner. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Let's go back to my notes. Sorry about that. From what Neil Miner was mentioning, that they want to try to get as much parkland developed in the new Missoula uh, Mullen area, a.k.a. McNett, uh, but, will over, uh, but with an overreaching plan to include public outdoor space with cash and loo would provide additional funding sources to make this happen. Each acre is valued at $95,000, with 20, uh, approximately 20 acres equals about $1.9 million total overall with that $208,000 geared uh, cash and loot towards the next ne flats. So um, Neil Miner addresses these costs overall with cash and loot. 
Uh, while the appraisal appears to contain flaws concerning the zoning applied to the parcel, after consulting with the city attorneys and city administration, based on the lack of clarity in the prior cash and lieu regulation, staff believes that the value gained from properly applying the B22 zoning is likely outweighed by the potential costs of pursuing this avenue and delays in construction. Therefore, the staff recommendation is to move city council to approve the calculation of cash in lieu of the parkland dedication amount in the amount of $208,435.42 for McNett Platt subdivision. Um, and with that, I uh, appreciate, I want to thank everyone. I know that I want to thank city council for the depth of understanding and approval of the recent code revision in the cash in lieu language as it would, will add a heightened level of transparency in this process and should result in the city's ability to meet residents' expectations regarding quality of life and access to parklands. All right, so that was uh, Neil Miner uh, ending his presentation, which you guys can more than enjoy, but I just want to give you the notes. Um, uh, before you make any judgment based on what I've said, I suggest you watch the uh, land use and planning. They talk a little bit more about this. And so far, this is just a way to control growth in neighborhood to create an outdoor space and funding source, hence the cash and loo, uh, which is confusing, yes, because I'm still confused, but the purpose is to basically uh, crowdsource fund for a lot of this parkland in these neighborhoods. Um, so let's move on to admin and finance. And, uh, and uh, they're talking about MCAT. So MCAT is uh, on the agenda to discuss the contract renewal with Charter Spectrum, which is used to fund MCAT and all these wonderful services that we provide to the public. Uh, MCAT open with the same hours of the library from 9 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, Ted Nugent talks about the how Spectrum Charter officials try to overreach by requiring more payments from MCAT for services that are once free through the franchise agreement. Uh, and this is what Ted Nugent had to say about that. I was informed last week by our cable TV consultant that recently the Sixth Circuit ruled in favor of the local governments and that he was glad that we hadn't pressed ahead with respect to uh, trying to conclude the cable TV franchise that we're negotiating because uh, Charter Spectrum was demanding stuff that the court said is inappropriate. All right, so that was Ted Nugent. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, the FCC, and there's just a lot more of information about this as well, but I, I didn't want to get too much into this, uh, but it did talk uh, a little bit more about, um, let's see, where are my notes? Da, da, da. Okay, so the franchise agreement has been kind of going back and forth. They had new regulations through the FCC, and so far, far they've been kind of, uh, there's been a lot of delays and then the short-term uh, franchise negotiations. But so far, this new deal is, uh, uh, this next, uh, this new agreement is for five years with the contract between the city and Charter Spectrum. So Joel Baird, the general manager at Missoula's Community Media Resource, uh, talks about the franchise agreement that Joel has been working on for five years, and this is what uh, he had to say. We're going to provide uh, services at all of the library branches, including Potomac, Frenchtown, Sealy, and Swan. During the pandemic, Swan, maximum capacity of their library was two persons. So um, they are looking forward to getting MCAT services like animation and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing they're providing, and this will benefit the city, uh, they're going to close caption all of the uh, government programs, including uh, city government programs will be closed caption on the TV. All right. So there's just definitely a lot more to this uh, deal as we're moving forward on this. A lot of things are happening here at MCAT as we are in our lo new location at the public library, open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and part of this it was the funding mechanism to, uh, along with franchising with the Missoula County, because so far we've only been franchised with the city of Missoula, and we did have a, a county uh, agreement with the Charter Spectrum, which will uh, allow us to uh, hire one and a half new employees. But before you start coming down here with your resumes those uh we are not hiring currently but we will be opening things up uh just uh I'll let you guys know as soon as I know. But right now, MCAT is not looking to hire yet. Uh, our fiscal year does uh, begin in July 1st of 2021. Along with that, fall programs will work in conjunction with other partners, Spectrum and Families First, for free activities at their parental relief 
uh, for parental leave for up to three hours, respectfully, here at the public library starting Saturdays in the fall. Um, up next, we're going to talk about some public works, and this is the um, corridor. This is a kind of a kind of a uh, interesting deal. They've been wanting to improve this corridor from Missoula to East Missoula for quite some time, and so reimbursements of $182,000 the city will pay to Montana Department of Transportation. Uh, this is uh, off of Highway 200, so there's a lot of uh, Montana D Department of Transportation um, red tape that uh, the city and the county are working towards to make this a possibility to improve the uh, connectivity between Missoula and East Missoula. So the result is to create an, uh, a safer means for everyone traveling down Highway 200 from Missoula to East Missoula, which is considered uh, another town. East Missoula is considered another community within the Missoula County and not associated with the city of Missoula unless you want to go more literally with the name. Missoula Metro Planning Organization planner John Sand talks a little bit more about this corridor that uh, the city of Missoula has planned. So uh, for those of you that are not familiar with this planning area, um, this corridor plan stretches from Van Buren Street within city limits um, all the way out to Tamarack Road uh, near, near West Riverside, so through the, the heart of um, East Missoula. And this is a really good example of a, a, um, you know, why, why the MPO exists. So all right, so, um, all okay, hold on one second. <laughs> I did want to throw this back to this picture. Um, you know, you have the Western segment. This is kind of like Albertsons kind of area, hotels, and then you kind of go through here. You have all these little communities that are popping here. Then you have the official East Missoula area um, in this uh, general area in which this will be more county related and Montana Tra Department of Transportation along with the city of Missoula because this is Broadway as it turns into Highway 200. And so there's a lot of interesting roads and deals uh, going through there as well because uh, the um, there's just, you know, in terms of construction and improvements um, infrastructure, even the Higgins Bridge is through the Montana Department of Transportation because it is a bridge and bridges fall in the purview of a lot of MDT type stuff. I didn't know that, but I think it's a interesting kind of tidbit I wanted to mention um, as well. Uh, let's see, the corner, they just want to improve it. And, you know, sidewalks, bikes, and pedestrians to be able to cross there, especially underneath the uh, railroad crossing that is kind of narrow and underneath there. They want to hopefully widen that and expand it for uh, travel and try to figure that out moving forward. So, But so far, this is the planning phase, and this, these are some of the areas that they want to talk about moving forward. All right, so I saved the best for last, or uh, more stuff for last. Um, Affordable Housing Resident Oversight Committee, first ever meeting of this kind where the city interviewed many folks from va various socially, uh, socioeconomic backgrounds to best reflect money from affordable housing trusts to keep folks in their homes. Uh, the first hour was spent getting acquainted with each other, while the next part was devoted to the ability to create an action. Every uh, meeting w that would propel the committee to change that the city can use to reference the for the Missoula's housing issues and affordable housing for the future. But most of all, the housing trust, the money that went into it, which is about $100,000, they want to aim this towards uh, keeping people in their homes, and that was the kind of like the purview of this. So Will uh, Sieben with the uh, committee speaks about uh, future actions within the committee. I think this all looks really good. Thank you for putting this together. Uh, I like the accept loose ends. Um, I would also advocate for like take action where we can. Like I feel like we're going to be meeting once a month. I feel like we should be trying to make sure there's some action coming out of each meeting even if we even if that means kind of limiting our focus on like what we need to tackle in that particular meeting but just make sure we're constantly moving the ball forward and i realize a lot of that's still to be determined in terms of what exactly our responsibilities are but i for one um, certainly want to make sure like every two hours we spend together once a month there's some action coming out of it as well all right, so that was Will. He talked a little bit more about that. I wanted to, uh, uh, they spoke in length about how affordable housing trust would be used, and it's uh, all pretty much on point to provide shelter for folks considering it a human right. Um, it, I don't mean to gloss over this meeting, but there was really nothing I could attach myself to at this time. So since it's just the beginning, let's, let's throw it over to board chair uh, Emily Harris, who talks uh, about how the funding will work and what, be, what the money would be going towards. 
And I just wanted to kind of highlight for you all the allowable funding activities that are outlined in the ordinance. Um, and they're, are, they're vast and they're outlined as land for the construction of affordable housing, preservation of existing affordable housing, com, uh, conversion or renovation of existing buildings into affordable housing, financing or infrastructure to support affordable projects, acquisition, development, construction, financing, operator owning affordable housing, upfront costs associated with permitting and development fees, uh, consumer housing programs and services, providing loan guarantees to affordable projects, providing gap financing for affordable housing projects and administrative costs um, really to the city to operate the fund. Um, and that can't um, be more than 8% of the total revenue per year. All right, so as you see, there's a whole funding mechanism. She uh, talked in length just about where the money will be going to. Um, and, you know, they'll decide, uh, you know, exactly, you know, finding places that look like it would be good for affordable housing. Um, and just definitely uh, kind of like uh, build something or reuse a lot of old buildings. But so far, they're working with a $100,000 uh, annual budget. Um, and so far, this is the first year. So it's all about how we're going to see how this turns out. It's a new f committee, and committees come and go pretty easily. But the trust is going to be consistent because as a trust, regardless of the principal bodies that are in power, will be continuing uh, into the future. So if you guys are actually interested in some city council, <laughs> I don't know why I worded it that way, but let's find the website. I probably should have uh, put it up beforehand, but without further ado, if you are m interested in finding out what's going on with the city of Missoula, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. And now that I have a little more live access for you guys, I can show you exactly how to find information through here. You can always search. You know, you can type in something, search. But what I always like to do when I find meetings, I go to government, I go down to city council, and the first one is a wen agenda, webcast, and minutes. So right around there, you click on that. Of course, you probably can't even see it that well since I'm on, uh, since on the TV. It might be a lot smaller. I prefer to use, like, the calendar. So you can kind of see there's a lot of uh, uh, different meetings that are currently happening. They have the plan for... Uh, so far, uh, they, they work on Friday, they work on getting the agenda ready for Monday based on what they had for the committee meetings, which they had on Wednesday. So just uh, kind of an overview. This is the best way to uh, get access to these meetings, know exactly when they are. You click on a meeting, let's just say, and I would suggest you go to agenda HTML because that also has the video component associated with the tabs in here. But it also comes with a Zoom meeting connection. So if you are just like, hey, I can't get access to this meeting. I want some of this say. You can join the meeting through here. Just make sure, um, and I'm going to say this very clearly, is that you have to have a Zoom app in which you can download it to literally any uh, computer for free. And it's uh, it's only cost money for those who are hosting the meeting, not for those joining the meeting. So uh, there's a lot of good resources for you guys out there. And um, you just got to go out there and take it. And like I said, ci.missoula.mt.us. I do have uh, another uh, short video for you guys, and here is a fun promo. I've shown this a billion times, but I'm going to show it to you guys again. And this is for our new location of the library. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. NCAT is Missoula's community media resource. NCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. MCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. 
NCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio, visual, video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some things that you guys can do. Like I like that last promo said that you guys can be part of MCAT, create shows like you see in front of you, maybe make a show that's even better than Wake Up Missoula. I doubt it, but let's talk about some of that stuff. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, workshops and stuff that MCAT will be hosting, but so far uh, MCAT is doing uh, orientation slash uh, light training every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. It's a good opportunity for a lot of people to uh, jump on board. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, things happening within the city of Missoula that just have to do with like, hey, I think this might be cool. I'm going to go check it out. Frenchtown Community Yard Sale happening right now, but also will be happening tomorrow. And this will happen from 7 to 3 today. But then again, it will happen on Saturday from 8 to 1 p.m. And this is a uh, uh, this is the Frenchtown Community Yard Sale. The whole idea is that the whole town comes together and kind of does their own yard sale. So if you go to Frenchtown, drive around, you see a bunch of yard sales popping up. That is the place to be for the next two days. Um, I think it's a great idea just to have a community... Uh, minded yard sale so everyone can jump on board. It's a great uh, ability to uh, really stretch your uh, bartering skills. Uh, stroller strides. So you are a mother and you're looking to get out there, but at the same time still kind of uh, have a connection time with your child. So they're doing a stroller strides at Tool Park and they meet at 9.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, you guys can always check it out because this is an ongoing thing. This is Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. 60 minute workout. You uh, is uh, comprised of strength training, cardio, and core restoration, all while entertaining the little ones with songs, activities, and fun. Each stroller stride instructor is skilled to meet you where you are mentally and physically. You'll leave a class feeling connected, successful, and energized. Missoula XC Mountain Bike Race. Marshall Mountain is hosting a bike race starting at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Come with the best pro mountain bikers ride to the Marshall Mountain. Free entry and first 200 spectators get a noise machine. And they're doing this today and tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. Uh, up next, we have a cabaret show that um, MCAT will be streaming on Saturday. But um, so far, they've been putting on shows all week long. Uh, the Ladies Who Lead, a parody cabaret, not for kids, uh, 7.30 every single night. And Saturday will be the last show, which will be live on MCAT. We're directed by uh, Jasmine Sherman and Maisie uh, Gospodarkit. Uh, Sorry if I mispronounced the name. It's, it's probably a lot more simple uh, said than read. Uh, the Comedic Cabaret is a musical uh, potpourri of the uh, uh, diva-driven musical theater sh uh, show stopper that you know and love. Well, a bit of a twist, silly, feminist, and fun. The ladies who lead will have you laughing from start to finish. Disclaimer, the show contains adult themes and some of the strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Even though you, we have some young kids at the last comedy show, that was very viewer discretion advised, just so you guys know. Otherwise, I'd be showing you a little taste of it this week, but there's absolutely no room for that kind of uh, language here in my show. Uh, MCAT will be live streaming this one late on Saturday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Uh, dueling pianos uh, at Staven Hoop, Staven Hoop Speakeasy, which is that alleyway uh, kind of between um, Office City and uh, uh, the former Zootown Brew, which is Liquid Planet. There's a nice little alleyway, and that's a speakeasy. So I didn't even know that was there until I checked it, uh, until I actually did some legwork. Um, but yeah, they're doing a dueling pianos uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Pay Dirt, there's going to be a country band as uh, one of Missoula's best bands will be playing at the Sunrise Saloon tonight as well. Uh, Saturday, uh, let's kick things off with some Saturday stuff. As always, you got your Farmer's Market, your People's Market, which started last Saturday, selling knickknacks, patty wax, hats, pockets, jewelry, fun stuff, even planters, because they, uh, they sell a lot of planters out there, uh, a lot of good wood carvings and woodworks and carpentry. Um, it's a great opportunity, but let's not just talk about that. We'll talk about some uh, Grant Creek markets and more. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to actually look this up, and it is a website called 406families.org. And I think this is a really cool website because um, it tells about summer camps, and it also tells a little bit more about, here it is, Food trucks. Yes, uh, there's a bunch of new food trucks that I just learned about uh, via 406families.org. And, you know, you have uh, 
new, a bunch of new ice cream soft serve. You got boba tea, a uh, organization called Thirsty. Um, you got Pearl, Boba Tea. There's a lot of Boba Tea coming in here, which uh, kind of makes me kind of concerned. But uh, then we got a uh, Japanese-styled uh, uh, shaved ice. It's a different way of doing shaved ice. Uh, they got uh, Ico uh, Montana, which they're doing uh, uh, Asian-type me- uh, uh, chicken and all sorts of stuff there. La, da, da. And then you got, yeah. Anyways, I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, it's a little too uh, corporatized, but these are a lot of these small business uh, kind of uh, starters. They'll probably be at the market, but uh, also you can go to 406 Families to find out more information about where they're going to be at certain times. And I think that website actually was surprisingly, amazingly informative. Um, let's see. Uh, yes. Part of uh, Walk and Roll, actually uh, Bike Month, uh, uh, Force Bike Month uh, ended in May. They still had a bunch of uh, lingering effects through Missoula in Motion. And this is Mountain Lions Route Race Round 3. I'm just checking on my time. Uh, the final round of Miz- Mountain Lions Route Race ends Wednesday, June 16th. Don't miss your chance to be entered to win an electric bike. Uh, Mountain Lion will host three legs of the of Amazing Race style route race. Hop on board the bus, follow the clues, and earn incentives from local businesses along the way. From each round completed, you're entered to win a Towny Electric Bike, sponsored by Windfall, compete all three rounds uh, for three entries to win. So it's a nice scavenger hunt for everybody, and you and, and once you collect it all, you'll be able to be entered to win an electric bike. And it looks like the electric bikes get pretty expensive, um, and they definitely help for folks who struggle going uphill, which is everybody. Uh, Missoula Iris Show. Southgate Mall, sponsored by the Missoula Iris Society. The 2021 Iris Show will be presented at the Southgate Mall from 9.30 to 8 p.m. starting on Saturday. It will be held in the area next to the Shields Construction Area and accessible from the new north entrance. Exhibition is open to members and non-members uh, with no cost, and they must uh, be grown, staged, properly tagged, and placed in person for exhibitor between the hours of 9 and uh, 7 and 9.30 a.m. Public viewing is also free and open while the... Uh, Mall is open, so that's going to be interesting. So they always have things there, boat shows here and there, but this is an Iris show. Um, Moon Randolph Homestead is uh, also open this summer. Uh, this time they're having an art talk and tour with Maya Hanna. Join us for Artist Talk Maya Hanna at the Moon Randolph Homestead from 12 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. noon. Um, this will be followed by happy hour with light food and drink and a chance to meet the artist and mingle. We got car shows. It's warm outside, so if you're interested at in going up to uh, Big Sky uh, brewery, brewery at the Big Sky Amphitheater, uh, it's up Expressway. They're doing a Big Sky car show auction music cruise. Um, and so they're going to have a lot of events happening all the way from 9 a.m. on Saturday all the way to 7 p.m. where they're doing a cruise with the Missoula Cruisers. Uh, Missoula Paddleheads will also be playing a baseball game on Saturday night starting at 7 p.m. Uh, they'll be going against uh, Missoula versus Billings, and they're really trying to get some people in seats, so they're doing a bunch of cash giveaways, which uh, a grand prize of $1,000 just by walking through the gates. Uh, but they'll also be doing another uh, a baseball game on Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, Chris Moon is coming back with some club music, and that's going to be happening Saturday night at the Badlander starting at 10 a.m. 10 p.m., sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm more uh, morning-oriented nowadays, but if you're interested in doing some night stuff, Saturday night, 10 p.m., the club. But then again, um, MCAT's going to be doing a live stream that night starting at 7.30 for the cabaret uh, show that has been going on at the Zach all week. Sunday, uh, send me a man. I'm the piano man. It's Piano Camp, and this is a hosted by the University of Montana starting Sunday at 8.30. This is a uh, summer camp. It is a summer music camp. Uh, since 1952, they've been offering summer camps. That has become a tradition for Montanans and many from around the c- uh, country. Music camp is a great time to interact with student musicians from all around the region while learning the UM's music faculty. Whether you are a serious all-state level musician or someone who loves playing, the UM Summer Music Camp has a place for you. They offer five different camps for students of all abilities from middle school through graduating high school seniors. Like I said, 406families.org are a wonderful, wonderful way to find out more information. But if you are more interested in finding out what's happening um, in terms of events, I I, I really got to bring up these pages a lot quicker. But if you go to MissoulaEvents.net, as you can see right on their webpage, this is a 
Uh, yeah, you can subscribe to the new newsletter and get updated information about <laughs> uh, events that are happening within the city of Missoula. But I kind of glossed over a lot of them, but I, I tend to go more for like kind of what's kind of popping, what's happening, more events, uh, entertainment value type stuff. Uh, but there's uh, always plenty of things that you guys can do here at the public library that they have a lot of events happening um, all the time. And you can go to uh, the Missoula Public Library org for more information. Wow, I've been going on for quite some time now. I do uh, th want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.